Will, yeah. first impressions, Donald Trump's hair up close. I've never seen anyone other than Lady Gaga have their hair go in so many different directions. A negative history Hi, with Fox I'm a millennial. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, sir. <laughs> stay, we're going to stay on Secret here. Service agents grabbed me right here. Mr. Trump, do you have a quick word for two million young people on YouTube? We're, we're millennials. John Stewart himself tweeted, Friends, after much reflection, I have decided to enter the transfer portal for my last year of eligibility. Excited for the future. 5'7-ish, 165 pounds, 14.8 second 40, hashtag blessed, hashtag NIL baby, hashtag TDS nation, hashtag LFGM. Listen, TDS nation. Comedy Central said, John Stewart is the voice of our generation, and we are honored to have him return to Comedy Central's The Daily Show to help us all make sense of the insanity and division roiling the country as we enter the election season. According to Variety, Stewart is expected to serve as Monday night host through the 2024 elections and into 2025. And for the Tuesday through Thursday episodes, The Daily Show will continue to rotate its roster of correspondents at the hosting desk. Listen, this is my chance. I couldn't get on The Daily Show while Trevor Noah was the host because we're too similar. See, if you don't live in Hollywood, if you don't live in New York, if you've never been to auditions before, what you gotta realize is that they put us all in the same block. The person I like to use, for example, is my friend, uh, Keith Leak. To Hollywood, me and Keith Leak are the same person. If you are familiar with African Americans, you know that me and Keith could not be more different. So when Trevor Noah was the host of The Daily Show, to Hollywood, me and him is the same. I couldn't be one of his correspondents because to Hollywood, I'm just mini Trevor Noah. Now that Jon Stewart is coming back, here's my chance. Listen, Jon, you're the voice of your generation and I'm the voice of the millennial generation. I told Donald Trump to his face he's a bigot. We're, we're millennials. Right. Right over here, sir. Ready? Yeah. Young people, I love you. Yeah. What's your biggest issue with minorities right now? <laughs> None. None, so that's our answer. How many other people who wanna be your correspondent have actually done that? On top of that, John, did you know I made Hillary Clinton giggle once? Thank you, thank you. Okay, we have, oh, okay, here we go. Hi, Hillary. Hello. I'm William Haynes, also a millennial. I know you like those. I do. <laughs> okay, how many people that wanna be your correspondents are capable of making somebody like Hillary Clinton, oh, oh, that's me. Listen, John, put me on your daily show. Okay, look, I don't know how to explain this in a way that's gonna keep you on my side, but I have a lot of respect for Jewish comedians, okay? Some people that have truthfully inspired my comedy uh, were Jewish, like, uh, isn't a ladies man, what's his name? Herbert Hebert, ain't he Jewish? Comedians like, have you ever thought about retiring? Why? Was there never a moment? Why? You got have truthfully inspired my physical style of comedy. You know, John, I hate to brag, but I know you're the voice of your generation, but I'm also the voice of mine. If there's one thing I hate, it's Nazis. If you believe in judging someone based on their religion, you're automatically anti-American. What I think millennials in Gen Z need to understand is the reason we fought in World War II. When Kanye made all those crazy rants that he did about a year or so ago, I, I felt ashamed to be a fan of his. And when I had my platform, I knew I needed to find a way to explain this to young people in their language. All you hoes mean so much to me. I couldn't do none of this without the line of hoes and that love me. I love you, ho. I love you. I love you, Jews. Hell yeah. What's up? What's up, bro? What's up, bro? Lock me up. Lock me up. <laughs> lock, me. lock me up. Yeah, lock me up. Once he, once he gets locked, he gets cut off right here. And then, I got to tell you, man. If he wants to keep going, he, he can keep going. He's not he only, is, like, winning uh, fights. He's great on the mic. That's all I was trying to say. America is supposed to be the land of the free, the home of the brave. The pilgrims came here to uh, escape religious prosecution. And you have to, see, I was in Tampa, Florida. You have to explain that to them in a way that they'll understand. And I don't know if you know how to do that, John. I know everybody's texting you right now, John, saying they want to be your millennial correspondent, but have they made their own political shows again and again with increasing level of comedy? Listen, you might find out that 
after a while, I, I let the politics get to me and I actually ran for office. John, I'm not gonna do that again. This was one of 23 candidates running in the 2017 Los Angeles mayoral election against incumbent mayor Eric Garcetti. But it was kind of cool because like, they were like, oh, everyone was murmuring like, what, this flew around for me? Yeah, 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 they were announcing, I didn't write my bio. I think yeah. they were asking me to write I my bio. I wrote it, yeah. Yeah, they were asking me to write my bio, but I was so busy. Yeah. I never had the chance to, yeah. so. But what they didn't know is I'm sensitive about my 2017 mayoral campaign. I lost. You lost? How'd you lose? I didn't get enough votes. Oh, well, that makes sense. <laughs> I don't like talking about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when he brought it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You went with it, bro, but yeah. it was hilarious. <laughs> Stop William the steal. <laughs> <laughs> we in Florida, right? <laughs> Eric Garcetti stole that election from me in 2017. Usually I wouldn't admit this, but I'm joking. I'm joking, you guys. I'm being sarcastic. I was like, let's see how much I can get away with in Florida. Really good crowd. I'm saying Eric Garcetti stole that election from me in 2017. Lock him up. He hands you the mic and you're like, I'm saying that. <laughs> oh my you have God. to go louder with the yeah. mic in your hand. Yeah. Lock him up. <laughs> John, I would never use your platform to try to run for office or anything like that. Those days are in the past. Right now, I'm just focused on, you know, just being a comedian and I might even move into motivational speaking. Like, you know, politics is of the past, unless we're gonna cover it in a funny way. And to the producers of The Daily Show, I've done amazing segments on no money. No money at all. Politics be like, people be like, look how incredible those projects came out. And look, this year, Beyonce, Kendrick Lamar, and Radiohead are headlining, which makes sense. Millennials love these people. You know who's performing that a lot of millennials don't know they love? Legendary composer Hans Zimmer. If somebody tells you that there's a rule, break it. Now before your Native American appropriated headband falls off, <laughs> because some of you don't know who this is, you should know that you probably already love his work. Mr. Zimmer composed the music to The Dark Knight, Man of Steel, Interstellar, and of course, Inception. <laughs> Remember when Inception came out seven years ago? Yes, seven years ago, and everywhere you went, you heard that. Everywhere you went, you heard the. Everywhere you went, you heard the. Ah. My segments? Oh, my segments was going crazy. So imagine if I had money with y'all segments. I know y'all segments like $500, right? I'm acting like I don't know how much money they cost. You, you give me $500, imagine what I could do with those segments. And also, like, you know, to the producers, like, with the, for the other correspondent people you're considering, I'll do it for less money than them. Like, whoever you're paying the least, I'll do it for even less money than them. I'm asking you to f me. How often, you know, does that happen? I'm asking you to, you know, do me like this. So, Comedy Central, Jon Stewart, you have found your correspondent. We can, we can recreate this scenario. I'm willing to infiltrate the Republican domain. I'll walk in and I'll be like, I love this uh, MAGA stuff, just like y'all. We need to make this clip better. I know I'm destined to run into this fool Donald Trump more and more time. And I feel like I can ask him a better question than the first time. Sarah Silverman follow me on Instagram and threads. She, she could vouch for me. She's been following me for over a year. She's seen a bunch of my posts. John, ask t Sarah Silverman. I know me and her have never spoke. I never slid in the DMs yet. But to ask Sarah Silverman, be like, oh, you follow Will. Like, do you think he's really funny? And she'll be like, actually, yes. Not only is he funny, he's also really sexy. And uh, so please, give me a chance. Give me a chance, give me a chance, give me a chance, give me a chance. Oh, give me a chance, give me a chance, give me a chance, give me a chance. Oh, baby. So, hashtag William for uh, TLDR show, make it happen. Let them know. I need everybody to tweet them that uh, my, my resume is unlike any other resumes. And, you know, I should be the correspondent. Thank you. Watch this other video I did about something really important. 